SpaceX's Martian landing vehicle, called the Starship, has recently undergone a design change. And the latest prototype is already being prepared for a new round of tests. With the promise of getting humans to Mars by the end of this decade, SpaceX has recently stepped up its efforts on perfecting the vehicle with new reports suggesting that the prototype finally completed an important static fire test. Let's take a closer look. Elon Musk, the billionaire founder of SpaceX, plans to build a full-size city on the surface of Mars. The private spaceflight company, which regularly launches cargo to the International Space Station with the Falcon 9 rocket and will soon launch astronauts up there, is currently building an interplanetary spacecraft for Mars. Known as Starship, the rocket-spacecraft combo will be able to launch 100 passengers and large amounts of cargo to and from the Red Planet. Before Starship can launch to Mars, it will start off launching commercial satellites, followed by a crewed flight around the moon in 2023. Although SpaceX has not given a timeline for its first missions to Mars, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has said that the first Mars base could be up and running in 2028. And while Musk shared some eye-catching artist illustrations depicting what he called Mars Base Alpha as an intricate network of buildings and infrastructure, SpaceX's plans for the Red Planet are not quite that extensive. For its very first Mars missions, SpaceX will land at least two uncrewed cargo ships on the Red Planet before sending any humans there. Those cargo missions would bring supplies, such as life support systems and power generators, that the first astronauts on Mars will need when they set up camp. The first uncrewed Mars missions will also be tasked with confirming the presence of natural resources that can provide fuel for future two-way missions to the Red Planet. SpaceX wants to use water ice from the planet's surface and carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere to refuel starships on Mars, enabling the rockets to return to Earth. After those first two cargo missions, SpaceX will launch two crewed missions alongside two additional cargo-only flights to begin setting up a propellant production plant. At that plant, water and carbon dioxide will be converted into liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which fuel the rocket's engines. So, while SpaceX intends to set up a transportation system for humans and cargo traveling to the Red Planet, the company won't be building an entire Mars base on its own. Musk has laid out his vision to create a million-person colony on Mars, but to establish that colony, SpaceX will have to work together with NASA and the agency's international partners and other commercial space companies. Several companies have already begun designing concepts for Mars habitats and have proposed orbital outposts similar to NASA's Lunar Gateway, which could serve as a waypoint for Starship and reduce the amount of fuel needed for return trips to Earth. The first Martian city will open to regular people, not just scientists and researchers. People interested in moving to Mars could pay for their flight with a loan. Once there, people would be able to pay off the loan by working in anything from iron foundries to pizzerias. Musk declared at a 2016 conference that there would be labor shortages for a long time. It's an idea that arguably bears resemblance to 19th century American company towns where employees lived in a city owned by their employer. Especially in the early days, Mars may not have many choices for local employment, and you'll need to pay off that loan for your flight. This city would be free to govern itself on its own terms, as indicated by the Starlink Internet Service Terms and Conditions released in October 2020. This appears to stand in contradiction to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which states that the launch origin country is responsible for subsequent space activities. David Anderman, who served as SpaceX's general counsel when the terms were released, suggests that the two documents may be set on a collision course. Musk estimated in 2019 that it would take around 1 million tons of cargo to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. Assuming it costs $100,000 per ton to send cargo to Mars for the upcoming Starship, that would put a Mars City's price at around $100 billion. At the high end, Musk estimates it could cost around $10 trillion. SpaceX may not stop with just one city, however. Paul Wooster, the principal Mars development engineer for SpaceX, said at the 21st Annual International Mars Society Convention in August 2022 that SpaceX could build multiple cities. The idea would be to expand out and start not just with an outpost, but grow into a larger base, not just like there are in Antarctica, but a village, then a town, which grows into a city, and then multiple cities on Mars. 
Musk claimed in 2019 that a return ticket could cost around $500,000 initially, dropping to $100,000 over time. Musk's goal in 2016 was to reach a ticket price of around the median price of a house in the United States. That would suggest people could sell their houses to move to Mars. In 2017, Musk outlined an aspirational plan to send two cargo ships to Mars as early as 2022. It would then send four ships at the next closest approach, two crewed ships and two cargo ships in 2024. However, in March 2022, Musk suggested that a more likely date for humanity to witness the first humans on Mars would perhaps be 2029. It's also possible, however, that Musk was referencing the moon landing that took place in 1969, making it around 60 years between the two feet. Mars and Earth are at their closest around once every 26 months. The distance between the two at this time reduces to around 33.9 million miles. As SpaceX has yet to even host its first orbital flight with the Starship, it seems unlikely that it'll send the first cargo ships this year. If SpaceX adjusts its plans to a more realistic late 2020s deadline, it's perhaps more possible that Musk could indeed meet his goal. Recent reports have stated that NASA is interested in the Starship. However, the agency won't be fully committed to using it for the first human Mars missions until SpaceX has proven that the vehicle is ready for flight. NASA is also considering using its own space launch system Mega Rocket for Mars, but the development of that new rocket has faced years of delays. Starship itself is still in the design phase and is constantly updated with new designs. SpaceX has also begun testing a small Starship prototype called Star Hopper. Experts suggest that SpaceX is still on track to meet its goals and send humans to Mars by the end of the decade. That time frame likely has something to do with the fact that the next suitable launch windows, based on the positions of Earth and Mars, will occur in 2024 and 2026. But while SpaceX is known for its ambitious ideas, Musk also has a history of offering ambitious timelines. Before we'll know when the first Starship missions can launch to Mars, SpaceX will first have to prove that the rocket can get there safely. Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. When Musk revealed his idea to the world, he laid out a basic plan. A large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft into Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical, propulsive landing. The spaceship, meanwhile, will make its way from Earth's orbit to Mars. The craft will touch down on such alien worlds and take off from them as well, without the need for any additional landing craft or ascent vehicles. Off-Earth refueling of the ship is therefore key to Musk's vision. For example, spacecraft coming home from Mars or the Moon will need to be topped up on those worlds using locally produced propellant. In 2016, Musk called this architecture the Interplanetary Transport System. The name was new, as the billionaire had previously referred to his envisioned concept as the Mars Colonial Transporter. Back then, Musk stated that the ITS will stand 400 feet tall when stacked. Both vehicles will be powered by SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine, which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The ITS ship will sport nine Raptors, and the 40-foot-wide booster will boast a whopping 42, allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff, 3.6 times more than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket was able to generate. And there won't just be one ITS ship and booster. The ultimate plan involves sending 1,000 or more people-packed spaceships to Mars every 26 months, helping to establish a million-person city on the Red Planet within 50 to 100 years. Musk did not lay out plans for building this city. The ITS's reusability could eventually bring the price of a Mars trip down enough to make it affordable for large numbers of people. This overall vision has held firm over the past three years, but Musk has repeatedly tweaked the design and the system's name. In 2017, for example, he announced that ITS was now the BFR, which stood for Big Falcon Rocket. The BFR was shorter, slimmer, and less powerful than its design predecessor, measuring 348 feet tall by 30 feet wide when stacked and featuring only 31 Raptor engines on the booster and six on the spaceship. But the biggest change concerned the use of the spacecraft rocket duo. Musk announced that SpaceX eventually planned to employ the BFR for all of its spaceflight needs, from launching satellites to ferrying people to and from Mars to cleaning up space junk in Earth orbit. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, therefore, will be phased out over the long haul, as will both the crew and cargo variants of SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Musk stated that expanding the BFR's role in this manner will make the system much more affordable for SpaceX to develop and manufacture. In September 2018, Musk told us that the rocket spaceship duo will now stand 387 feet tall when stacked. 
The BFR ship will also sport seven Raptors instead of six, and the vehicle will now sport four movable fins, two near its nose and two bigger ones near the tail. These fins will help the ship maneuver its way to safe landings on worlds with significant atmospheres, such as Mars and Earth. The two rear fins will also serve as landing pads, as will a leg that's stylized to look like a fin. Two months later, the BFR was no more. Musk told us that the system will now be called Starship. That'll also be the spaceship's name, whereas the huge rocket will be called Super Heavy. The latest news from SpaceX states that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype, Booster 7, on September 19th, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. The company cleared a major hurdle in June with the completion of an environmental review that allows the launch to go forward but requires dozens of modifications to the mission plan. Once SpaceX has the green light from regulators, Starship will be able to launch from Starbase and take a brief trip to orbit before performing a splashdown, landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Super Heavy will separate from Starship shortly after launch and attempt to land on a modified drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. In addition to its inevitable role in getting humans to Mars, all of this is leading up to Starship's eventual participation in NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts to the surface of the moon as soon as 2025. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about new evidence that may prove the existence of Planet X. Do you think the Starship will be ready in time for a crewed mission to Mars? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.